Today we're going to begin the study of Iaido, the practice of drawing and cutting the sword. Iaido is a method of mental refinement and spiritual discipline. Our method of Aiki Toho Iaido is a form of Iaido developed by Shoji Nisho Sensei specifically to deepen our Aikido practice. The goal of our practice is to develop a peaceful, focused mind and a deep sense of harmony with our surroundings to unify our mind and our actions with nature. The term Aikito Iaido means the Aiki sword method of Iaido. I first encountered Shoji Nisho Sensei in the early 1980s. Nisho Sensei said something then that has stayed clearly in my mind ever since. He said, in Aikido we are training the mind, but it's difficult to train the mind directly, so we train the mind through the body. That statement was much more revealing than it appeared to me at the time. One of the major traditions of Buddhism in Japan is Shingon Buddhism. Shingon Buddhism was founded by a monk named Kukai in the 9th century AD. Kukai is also famous for inventing kana, the Japanese written language. Among the teachings of Shingon are the San Mitsu, or Three Mysteries, which are the body, speech, and mind. In much of Western religious and philosophical thought is the notion that cultivating one's character begins with the mind. But the Shingon approach is exactly the opposite. Instead, the path to enlightenment begins with the body, by correct action. Correct action then leads to correct expression, and ultimately to a correct mind. To quote Kukai, nothing has a definite nature, so people cannot be purely evil. Even so-called evil people will aspire to follow a moral path when they feel a sense of community. As Nishio Sensei suggested, the mind is difficult, but by being encouraged through proper action and expression, we arrive at a correct mind. We'll start by examining the basic parts of the sword. Ska is the handle. Saya is the scabbard. Suba is the handguard. Sageo is the cord. Kurigata is the knob that attaches the sageo to the saya. Ska. Suba. Saya. Drawing the sword slightly, we're able to see the habaki, the metal collar that fits firmly into the koiguchi, or carp mouth, the oval-shaped opening of the saya. Looking at the blade, there is a sharp side, ha, which means edge, and the back side, which is not sharp, mune, which literally means back of the sword. If you're invited to examine someone's sword, it's never proper just to pull the blade out slightly and then slide it back in. That suggests that you've seen enough and that the blade is not worth viewing in its entirety. So always pull the blade out completely this way and examine it. When returning the blade to the owner, hold it in two hands with the edge facing up. If you have to kneel or pick something up while you're wearing your sword, you have to be careful that your sword doesn't slip out of the saya. Keep your thumb on the suba to prevent this. If you do make a mistake, then you must avoid your instinct to grab the blade. If the blade falls out, just let the pommel or skakashira hit the floor, and then return it safely by the suba. When walking with the sword, hold it in your right hand by the saya with the blade down and the ska behind your arm. When beginning training, we bow first to the shoman or front of the dojo. Hold the sword in an angle against your body, right palm on top of the suba, as you bow toward the shoman. Then move the sword into your right hand, edge down, and bow to the sensei.
Finally, hold the sword edge up horizontally at eye level and bow to the sword. Keep the sword in the same position as you bow. Then, gather the sageo in the middle finger of your right hand. Put the sword at an angle so you can slide the saya into your obi or belt. To tie the sageo, open a space under a himo or one of your hakama cords in the front of your right hip. First, make a small loop and push it up under the hemo. Then make another loop with the free end and tuck it up inside the first loop. Tug the long end of the sageo to tighten the knot. Releasing the sageo is simply a matter of pulling on the free end. Wear the sword so that you can simply bend your elbow and your thumb comes directly to the suba. Don't wear the sword too far forward or too far back. The handle of the sword should face straight forward, parallel to the line that your arms naturally swing. When we draw the sword, we'll bring the ska and our right hand together on our center line. The thumb releases the habaki from the koiguchi before drawing, and the thumb re-secures the habaki into the koiguchi when we return the sword to the saya. Never slam your sword back into the saya. If you do this, you'll tend to break down that nice snug fit and your sword will always want to fall out of the saya. We wear the sword with the edge up. This means that when we draw, the top of the sword is actually facing the ground. So when you begin to draw, bring your right hand and the ska to your center line and contact the underside of the ska with the web between your thumb and index finger. You can also use your left hand to rotate the sword slightly in order to make this easier. Use your left thumb to smoothly release the sword from the saya as you draw. We angle the saya with our left hand depending on the first cut we want to execute. To draw up and prepare for a downward cut, we can keep the blade up. To draw into a horizontal cut, we can angle the saya out, called the yokosaya. To draw into a rising cut, we can twist the saya all the way over so the blade faces the ground as we draw. Now we'll get used to drawing the blade up, stepping forward and cutting down. Every form has four basic parts. Nukiske, which is drawing and cutting. Kiriroshi, the decisive cut or cuts. Chiburi, shaking the blood from the blade, and Noto, returning the blade to the saya. We'll isolate these four parts in this practice. Now for Nukiske, we'll draw horizontally as we step with our right foot.
Notice how the left hand pulls the saya backward as the sword is drawn forward. Pulling the saya back this way is called saya biki or saya pulling. This is an important part of drawing the sword. Even with this simplified form, there are many things already happening here that require quite a lot of detailed study. Now step with your right foot and draw so that the tip of your blade is right at the opponent's heart. Then step left as you bend your right elbow and circle the sword around the left side of your head. Don't drop the tip of the sword as you circle it. Have the feeling of thrusting the tip of your sword backward behind your left ear. Now we'll add a left step at the beginning. Finish your cut with the sword flat and then bring the sword up slightly to Sagon, which means toward the eyes. Rotate your right hand grip outward slightly and bring the blade to the side for Chiburi. Then return the blade to the Saya. When performing this Chiburi, Point the sword straight forward and keep your right hand at about the same height as your left hand, which is retrieving the saya at the same time. The blade should be slightly angled down, and the right hand should be about in line with your right knee. Again, the right and left hand should be at about the same height. Mastering a straight cut in Iaido is as subtle and intricate as mastering a golf swing. We'll hit the main points here. The arc of your swing should go out and then slightly back towards you as the blade is coming down. This means that as the blade goes through its target, it is actually moving back towards you. Remember, the sword is made for cutting, so the blade should slide across the target. Don't use your sword like a club. We prepare to cut by raising the sword overhead, pointing about 45 degrees to the back. This is called furikaburi. Finish the cut with the handle about one and a half fists away from your body. Shibori, or ringing, is the feeling that the grip of both hands is turning inward at the end of the cut. Don't actually let your grip slip around the handle, though. This is more of a feeling of twisting the hands inward without letting them slip. Shibori is actually what stops the sword at the end of the swing, rather than trying to stop the sword by tensing your shoulders. Good shibori allows your shoulders to stay relaxed and loose while cutting. When cutting diagonally, called kesegiri or sash cut, begin the cut from over your head just like makogiri and then angle your hands and body as you cut. This basic exercise will help strengthen your grip and cuts. Draw the sword at a 45 degree angle, then thrust, cut right side diagonal, left side diagonal, and finish with a straight down cut. Now we'll study the first form of the basic set of 15 Aiki Toho Iaido forms. 
There is a limitless number of forms in Aiki Toho Yaido, but the basic 15 forms represent the core of the curriculum. The first form is called Shohato, or beginning sword form. Unlike most of the other forms we do, this form does not correlate to any particular Aikido empty hand technique. Rather, it's meant to instill good basic sword handling skills. You'll see that I almost had you doing this form earlier in our warm-ups, so this is not a huge stretch from that. On this nukiske, your arm and sword should form one straight line, slightly descending from your right shoulder to the opponent's heart. Again, on your nukiske, finish with the tip of your sword at the opponent's heart. I'm introducing this form at a very basic level to make the various components clear. There's much more to expressing this or any form at a higher level. Here are some other elements needed to refine the quality of your form. Hasuji is the angle of the blade as it encounters the target. It's important to have the blade impact the target at the correct angle, otherwise the cut cannot be considered effective. Metsuke is the feeling, strength, and focus of the eyes. The eyes should have a soft intensity without being narrowly focused. There's a saying, Enzan no Metsuke, which means to focus like you're looking at a distant mountain, so that you can take in everything without getting tunnel vision. Another component is breath control. The breath should move naturally with the form. Generally, the first step of a form begins with inhalation. A good form can be done in a single breath. Beyond these things, you should consider the overall martial spirit in your form, as well as your artistry. For example, the pacing of your movement should follow what's called johaku, an aesthetic principle in Japanese arts, which means to begin slowly, speed up, and then end quickly. This concept can apply to the overall pace of a form, as well as to the individual parts of the form, such as chiburi or noto. Please practice well. Domo arigato gozaimashita.